morning. I am. Um, I now got a new style. I think I'm gonna wear this forever and ever now. It's so lofty or fluffy or airy or whatever you want to call it. You have so much freedom in it. <sighs> We're back home. Let's open the gate. Wow, that's what you get if you don't have 3D vision anymore. Because you're looking through it, to it, at it, through cam. Okay, I can't talk anymore. I have a podcast now with Sir Kyle, Zen Wizard. And then after that, I have a call with Thomas about um, the guy with who, who helps me with my website to kind of go over last things. What's up? Look at this. If this is not the cutest thing in the world, I don't know what it is. Her name is Miracle because she's a miracle. So cute. <laughs> so my friend, oh my god, look how she's looking at me. My friend adopted her, uh, I think four days ago because she found her in front of a pharmacy and um, the mom wasn't around. And then actually the pharmacy took care of her the whole day to see whether the mom came back. And the mom never came back, so my friend adopted her. And I'm babysitting today. I gave Miracle some food and I gave her some dewormer because she's now getting dewormed. And uh, my friend said she might get diarrhea, but we're looking good so far. No diarrhea so far, so I'm hopeful. Um, also, I just um, recorded a Q&A podcast with myself because I'm very smart about the podcast, which is I'm putting out a podcast episode every Saturday and I didn't have a backlog of episode, which means until now my process have been has been that I record the podcast Saturday morning, which is Friday evening for most of the people I talk to. Um, and then I edit it and upload it directly. So I have my Saturday episode, which means if that person cancelled on me or has to reschedule or doesn't make it, I don't have a podcast, which is a problem. I already knew that's a problem, but for some reason I like didn't put the system into place. Oh my god, look at her. Um, so yeah, I had to reschedule this morning's podcast. And so I thought, I'm not gonna not post, so let me just do a Q&A podcast. I asked for people to send in questions on Instagram, and so they did. And so I just recorded like 35 minutes of answering your guys' question. Um, you can listen to that. It's on Anchor, anchor.fm anchor slash Fentholmeyer. I go over. Oh, I can't even. Um, I go over basically how I make money. Um, though you guys who follow the vlog should know, right? Like you know. Oh no, she's biting my finger. And it's not hurting. It doesn't hurt. It does not hurt. You're a beast. Wow. You're such a beast. Oh my god. Oh my god. She's so dangerous. Look at her. Miracle. Um so yeah, posted that. Now she's now she's almost falling down. Um and now I'm babysitting this cute little thing. Oh look, okay now she pooped a little bit. There you go. She pooped a little bit on my on my pants. You see that? You pooped. You have a little bit of diarrhea from the diworm diver deworming. So I'm gonna clean that up and then I'm gonna actually work on the website. A couple of weeks ago, I actually asked you guys to send in any questions you have about Bali. Um, it took me super long to record this video, but now I'm making it. Now I'm also longer in Bali. I think I'm now here for six weeks, so I think I can better answer them. So um, yeah, try to go through them as fast as possible. By the way, super cliche, I'm sitting right next to a rice field here, and I'm actually babysitting a little kitten, um, a little kitty kitty. Ah. My friend adopted a kitten, so um, that's where we're making this video. I, it, 
there's are a couple of questions so I try to rush through them as fast as possible so this video won't be like 20 minutes long first question by Dana Dania what are some of the other entrepreneurs and companies around you um, really anything and everything I mean it's mostly digital nomads and freelancers so one-man shops um, a lot of e-commerce people a lot of social media marketing people um, a lot of people who have a normal job at a company but they are allowed to work remotely there are actually some people here that um, work for a company in the US which means they are like getting up at 3 a.m. in the morning and going to work and then finishing work somewhere in the afternoon or in the morning here or something um, which is not necessarily the healthiest lifestyle but there's all kinds of like businesses and online entrepreneurs and digital nomads here second question by Lance hi Finn quick question about Bali did you tell your clients about the move what was their reactions and did you message them with your new number after you landed so they know were they skeptical so I didn't ask for my clients permission if that's where this is going um, I did let them know that I'm moving to Bali um, obviously that meant that the client calls are at a different time um, for me they are in the morning or in the afternoon 13 hour difference to the East Coast um, that means it's for the in the morning or in the evening for those people just like the exact opposite um, but no one was like skeptical or something um, as long as I'm delivering my results um, that's that's the only thing I got to do what is your company so project 33 is a personal branding company and we work with founders to build their personal brand on LinkedIn specifically we also recently expanded to Instagram and soon YouTube to come and so it's really strategy content creation and then distribution slash growth um, to to help founders manage their personal brand when they are too busy to do that Nancy asks, what are your main methods for international client communication and what is the primary language? Um, main method is Slack and Zoom calls, Zoom um, video calls, and then, yeah, the language is English. Ophera asks, why did you choose Bali? I know it's a beautiful place, but it's easier or hard, but is it easier or harder to get clients from there? How, how are the beaches? Are they as beautiful as Hawaii beaches? Um, I chose Bali because my visa to the US got denied. I wanted to go back to New York, but um, that option wasn't there anymore. And then I talked to a person who told me about Bali. And um, I was like, either you're full of shit or if what you're, true, what you're telling me is true, then why is not everyone here? So Bali has a couple of advantages. It's super cheap, so you can have a low overhead cost. Um, there are lots of networking opportunities because it's now actually kind of the mecca for these people, digital nomads, online entrepreneurs, people like me who run their business remotely. Um, and it's obviously, I mean, look at it. It's not too shabby either, right? And I have a kitten here. Um, and the beaches, I don't know about the beaches. I've never been at the beach. I've been to the beach once. Um, Lisa asked, that's my favorite question. You're running a company, you look about 14. Um, I think actually I look 17. By the way, I'm 22. Actually, no. I just found a photo of me when I was 15 years old, my first year in high school, and I look exactly the same. So, yeah, no, I have a baby face. Um, how many mosquito bites per day, asked Robert. Um, you can get mosquito repellent usually like five bites per day but they're actually not as itchy as i thought they would be joe mclaughlin asks how do you monetize your business and how do you fund it uh we have clients um what are you best communicating tools when with clients when working remotely oh yeah i answered that that's slack and zoom calls in my opinion i like them the most i don't like email Connor asks, how much does it cost to live in Bali? I think that's one of the most asked questions. How much does it cost? So you can live in Bali, I would say for $500 a month. Um, you can get a one bedroom apartment for 200, sometimes even low, as low as $120 per month. It's not a nice place, but it's also not a like super bad place. 
um, food meals you can usually get if you're eating out but local food you can get for like two dollars per meal so 500 can get you around if you have a thousand that's a solid budget if you have 1500 per month you can live like a king like then you can really have a beautiful place I mean I'm staying at a villa right now um, pool staff they take care of my laundry, breakfast included, and I'm paying 800 euros a month. And that is like the high end of what you can get pretty much. Um, April asks, is it really as calm and relaxing as it looks? I mean, yeah, it can be. Um, Sam, I'll ask the obvious question. No one is asking, how the hell is Bali? Looks pretty awesome. Um, yeah, Bali is, Bali is pretty awesome. Um, I'm glad I made the decision. Um, Mark Matry asks, how's the Wi-Fi? So, Wi-Fi, at the place I'm staying at, the upload speed is actually good. I have 40 megabits of upload speed. Download speed is also good. So, um, I mean, I'm posting a YouTube video every single day and I have no issues with that. The only thing is, depending on the place, the consistency is sometimes slow and sometimes the, the internet breaks off for like a split second and depending on the service you're using that can cause issues for example FaceTime if even if the internet breaks off for like a millisecond FaceTime fucks up and can't reconnect and so you have to cancel the call and recall them for zoom for example or Google Hangout it lags sometimes in between but you're usually like pretty good Jeffrey asks Hey Finn, what's an unexpected issue when it comes to serving clients remotely, especially with time zone differences and what solutions have you found? Um, I mean, yeah, the biggest issue is time zone difference. I am 13 hours ahead of the East Coast where most of our clients are. And um, that just means that it's the exact reverse, right? Like I pretty much only have like the mornings and the evenings to communicate with clients because when it's their midday at 4 p.m., it's pretty much my 5 a.m and that's not working so you pretty much have to keep client calls and client communications to your mornings which are their evenings or afternoons and your evenings which are their mornings um, but um, I mean I am willing to take calls at like 9 p.m. 10 p.m. 11 p.m. if you're not willing to do that I mean you can still do with just doing it in the morning and doing like calls from 7 a.m. 6 a.m. But there are definitely trade-offs, but um, I'm willing to take them. Um, but that's that's the biggest thing I would say. So yeah, that were, oh, last question, Dan. Do you have a free room for a roommate? Um, for sure, dude, you can come over. I have a big bed, I can always, we can make space. Um, but yeah, you should come visit. And I know you're already planning to visit, so I'm looking forward to hang out. And that's about it. So those are all the questions. If you have any further questions, I might make another version as I'm learning more and more about this place and how things work and how the culture is and all of these things. <sighs> I'm feeling bad and I don't know why. It's ugly in my head right now. Ugh. I'm frustrated and I'm Blech. I don't I don't know how to describe this feeling but sometimes that happens Ugh. I'm wondering whether I should meditate it out or some bullshit I just got to cut my shit okay there's no objective reason to feel anxious right now Well, these moments happen. Just wanted to let you know that. And I don't know why they happen. But they happen. Hard to wake up when there's no alarm to wake you up. Sitting, breathing, doing all the things I hate a lot. But why?